conceptual stuff, uh, perspective people talk Real about talk, it, it shots. Shots. all of the elements. <laughs> Everybody's doing good. I'm back at you again. This has been a very busy day. Uh, look, I'm going to get right into it because I'm running behind and I got some things I need to get to. Uh, but this is something I want to touch on while it's fresh on my mind because I want to make this point. Uh, before I get started, remember, uh, we're in the middle of a fundraiser. So support the work we do at the Odyssey Project from our research to our think tank to programs like Black Men Lead. Uh, our wraparound services for people with mental health, uh, training, skills training, so much more. We need your support. Definitely, if you can help, help. With that being said, look, I came to you early and I was talking about what uh, the media has started. And uh, we talked about Roland Martin and his uh, tendency to call black men stupid when they say something he doesn't agree with. Um, if you haven't been paying attention, uh, the media is hot, it's racing, it's burning, uh, as it pertains to uh, as it pertains to um, Kanye and some uh, alleged anti-Semitic statements that he made. I'm saying alleged because I haven't heard him saying it. I don't even know what the statements were. But obviously it's hot and it's got a lot of people bothered. And here's what uh, I have uh, confirmed with my own uh, research. And I'm talking about it for the sake of understanding how things work and understanding where we stand and where we are in the middle of all this. Whatever he said, was considered to be anti-Semitic. If you don't know what anti-Semitic is, it is negative statement towards European Jews. Okay. Uh, with that being said, what Forbes is now reporting is that the hits that Kanye have taken because of people dropping him and deals falling through um, but most importantly, because Adidas has chosen to drop his deal for the Yeezy brand, he has lost in the course of a week $1.5 billion. Uh, he has dropped out of the billionaires list. Uh, it is what it is as far as me, uh, and I'm concerned um, about that, but it's significant in the sense of the impact of the people he insulted. Uh, and I want to point to this because he said some statements. These statements in and of themselves were either true or false. I haven't heard him, so I can't say whether he was telling the truth or not. Um, so I don't know. I'm pretty sure some of you guys have heard the statements. Uh, I mean, I'm moving in a different vein. So a lot of stuff that most people are getting normally, I see something and I keep it rolling. Uh, I don't even take time to stop and read it. So whatever he said, I missed. And, uh, from what I understand, he doubled down on it with some tweets or whatever and got knocked off of all the social media. So he went and bought parlor. Uh, and then, uh, people were calling for Adidas to drop him and he took to, whatever social media he had left or whatever interview he had. And he sit up and he determined that he was going to challenge Adidas. He basically dared Adidas. Now he said, they can't drop me. So now what? Now I read that particular statement or tweet. And I'm assuming that happened before Twitter cut him off. Cause it looks like a tweet from where I read it at. Um, and so well, from what I understand in today, Adidas dropped him, and when they when they dropped him, they took a major hit on the stock market. They took a what sixty four percent hit 
in prices, in stock prices. They took a major hit. They're expecting to lose initially 200 plus million dollars for that particular decision, but they're saying they're going to gain it back. Now, I don't know what their overall, uh, from what I understand, they aren't necessarily rolling in the dough in the sense of uh, revenue, but they decided to take it. Here's one of the things that comes with the pressure. You got to understand the story. You're talking about anti-Semitism, right? So you're talking about European Jews, and in, in, in it all centers around the Holocaust, primarily. If you don't if you don't know the history of Adidas, Adidas is owned by one of two brothers. One owns Adidas, the other owns Puma. So you t but they're from Germany. So you're talking about people from German descent owning a shoe company that is in cahoots in in, in direct collaboration with a person who is making anti-Semitic statements. And so they were in a PR nightmare. I can guarantee you, from a business perspective, they did not want to cut ties with Kanye it just didn't make financial sense to do so but it may have been financial suicide not to because now you have one of the strongest most powerful forces period if we're going to be honest on the wrong side of you and applying pressure to you to do something and if you don't do it that, pr that pressure doesn't go away it intensifies it increases and you got to understand, one person, uh, a CEO, uh, well, I think it's Aurea Manuel, sits up and said, hey, everybody drop it. And people start dropping him like, 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 like hot grease, hot potatoes. And I am not a counsel person. I'm not, I'm not that, per I'm not that person that when someone says something, something I don't like, I start talking about cancel them. Here's why. That's going to be a person I like that is going to be saying something that other people don't like or it might be me saying something that other people don't like and now because they don't like what I say they can start talking about shutting me down and canceling me I'm about let a person say what they want to say they reveal who they are to you you make your decisions on how you're going to deal with them but there are certain pers there are certain groups certain people certain races that will not tolerate it and they will take swift action now I brought all that up because it's interesting to me that while this group will not tolerate what Kanye did, we have had all types of misogynistic, drug promoting, violence promoting, rappers dying on a freaking weekly basis almost industry promoting all kind of negativity into the minds of our children and nobody said nothing all the things that have gone on that have been counterintuitive counterproductive and literally catastrophic and devastating to the black community and nobody said nothing nobody's done anything nobody's gotten counseled nobody has been punished or received any sort of punitive uh measures uh for all of that and it has had a far more devastating impact on the black community than the things Kanye have said about the Jewish community. They're doing what they are supposed to do. Whether you like it or not, whether you like what they're doing and how they control, they're doing that. They're protecting their interests. My problem is we're fighting more about what's happening to someone else than we are. We got upset because he said slavery was a choice. We didn't really do anything about it. We, we, we didn't mobilize. You know, we said we were going to stop doing this. He got wealthier after he said that. People are still buying his stuff. He's taking hits in every other way. And this is not about me feeling one way or another or supporting one way or another about that because it runs so much deeper. And I haven't delved deep, deep enough into it to start talking about how I feel about impacting someone's thing. But what I can tell you is even if he's not a billionaire, his livelihood as far as he's not going to be on the streets eating. But I can tell you a lot of people are being negatively impacted in the black community from the stuff that's being fed into the community by way of media. 
Nobody's doing anything about it. Nobody's saying anything about it. I yell to the top of my lungs. Emasculation of black men, the feminization of the black male image, the perpetuation of the uh, black gender war, all this stuff is being pushed and instigated in the media. Nobody's saying anything about it. What we need are protocols. We need protocols that dictate how we respond to things that do not work in our interest. That's what you're seeing right now with the response of their community against what Kanye said is protocols. This is what they are programmed, trained, conditioned, and literally taught to do. If we do not tolerate it. We will immediately take action. We will immediately use our wealth, our power, our influence to strike down anything that moves against us or insults us anyway or anything like that. And they're doing what they're doing. They have the power to execute it. They're protecting their interest. My problem is we're sitting over here and fighting battles for everyone else and all this stuff. And we are hell bent. We're mad at Kanye for one reason or another. Most people are uh, mad at Kanye because of whatever. But nobody is looking at any of the issues that he actually pointed out and saying, is there merit? We don't search merit. We don't search validity. We don't look for veracity in statements. We look at how we feel. We act on how we feel, but then we act out of a position of uh, helplessness and vulnerability because we don't know what power feels like. We don't have the ability to execute power. When we talk about developing and building power, it's just a fancy of speech because we're not unified. We're not connected. We're not doing things that allow us to move in a manner that will empower us. So what happens? We're just having a collective temper tantrum. And what we're getting to see now in juxtaposition to our temper tantrum is what real power looks like. And this power was developed rel relatively quickly. We're talking about 30s, 40s to now. We're not even talking 100 years. But it takes plans. Now I'm not saying that 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 there aren't challenges. I'm not saying that we're not working against a systemic force. What I'm saying is we have to have some sort of strategy, some sort of agenda, some sort of idea of how we're going to move to position ourselves in a place that we can navigate uh, through all of these different obstacles to achieve a goal. We can't sit there expecting the enemy to fix our problems, to expect the enemy to raise the foot of our neck, expecting the enemy to do something for us that does not benefit them. That's not how this game is being played. This is not a moral game. This is not a game of ethics. This is a game of win and survive. And we are constantly on the bottom end, back end of it, because we refuse to recognize how the game is being played. We want people to feel our pain and show some mercy. We want people to feel our frustration and do the right thing. How long are you going to sit up and wait for someone to do the right thing when they consistently show you they have no intention on doing it? They'll feed you some lines and they'll talk sweet to you. They'll rub you on your back while they're cutting your throat. You got to understand that this is how the game is played. They didn't ask anybody for anything. They didn't sit up and say, oh my God, why are you doing this to us? They went for the throat. They went for the jugular. They shut that shit down. Whether you like it or not, whether you love it or not, that's the power game. Now, there's nothing stopping us but us from getting the power game. Do you think they didn't have opposition? Do you think there wasn't thing? There was a guy trying to kill them all. Instead of studying them, we talk about it. We either be, be, be demean or... Uh, marginalize them, but we never really truly understand and study the movement, the thinking, how they operate. 
when I was looking at the development and building of Black Man Lead, one of several rite of passages that I studied was the rite of passage of Jewish boys. They are so pro-socialized into their heritage, their, their personal history, their personal obligation, that it is ingrained in their psyche. It is literally inculcated so deeply inside of their mentality that they simply live it. And while you may not like it, it serves their community. And that's the thing we lack. We're too busy being ourselves. We're too busy loving ourselves. We're too busy. I'm going to do me. And anytime somebody, no matter how well, and th this whole thing about yay proves, this, proves something. This is a dude that was worth over $2 billion. And yet, the moment he does something that those in power don't like, he's not even safe. So how do you feel your little one million, two million, five million, six million, and most of you that said I'm doing myself maybe six figures, some of you got the audacity to do it with less than that. How do you think you really actually stand up against that structure if it decides to stand on you? The only hope you have is a collective community. And the one thing that I saw in all of this, while everybody's talking about Yeezy's a genius and he's all this, one thing I saw was an arrogance that did not measure the steps. Now, I'm not saying that's not some crazy strategy in his head of how he's going to recover down the line. And hit with his creativity, I'm not doubting that he will, that he won't recover, that he, uh, I'm not doubting the possibility of his recovery down the line. What I'm saying is he did not on the front end measure his moves and think clearly and what i mean by that is the only way you survive going after them is you better have a group of people behind you that's gonna say no matter what y'all do we got him we'll we'll get behind him we'll spend our money with him because that's the only thing that's going to balance that. If What he did is he alienated both sides. Now, I don't know if it's some crazy philosophy or thinking behind it and, you know, contribute to whatever you want to. I'm not arguing whether he's a genius or not and all that stuff like that. I know he's extremely creative and that's great. But what I'm saying is he didn't think that through. You know, you, you know, you that David and Goliath thing sounds cool until you got to do it. And I'm saying for the right thing, I, I, you know, I'm going to stand and speak what I want. But just going to pick a fight to, for the sake of picking it and then daring everybody not to hold you accountable for starting it. And again, I'm not saying what he said was false or whatever because I haven't heard it. What I'm saying is it wasn't the best move to not think that through because of the volatility of his thought process and how he moves. I'm not saying he's one thing or another. I'm saying look at what we do in juxtaposition to what they did and you will see the difference in power and weakness and how we operate is pure, unadulterated weakness. And the crazy thing is our potential for power is unlimited but we have chosen to leave it shackled because we refuse to stand together we refuse to come together we spend way too much time tearing each other down than we do looking at those who stand on the outside and oppose us that's the thing that I'm talking about that's it you know you know am I crying crocodile tears for what's happening to do I'm worried about making sure that the people I love and care about are good long after I'm gone. So I'm trying to build. And you don't build by tearing down. You don't have a mind. You build by defending. Now, if you come to, to me, you come at me, I'm going to fight with my until my last breath to defend myself and what I love. But just sitting up and going out and attacking and tearing down people 
and wishing the worst on people and hoping they fall. That's a lot of negative energy. I don't want nowhere near me. I let life handle people. I don't even worry about the people who talk bad about me. I don't worry about the people who are out there spreading rumors. I don't worry about people who are whispering in the air. I live my life. And if you spend time around me, you'll know me and know the person I am. And you'll know how dependable I am. You'll know how much I care about the work I do. You'll know how long and hard I go in the paint for the things I care about. You'll know I'm not spending not a dime a day of my time trying to do harm to anybody. What people say about me, they'll say it. My life will speak for me. My legacy is constantly speaking for me. The things that I've done for people over the years, that, that you can't undo that. So I'm not going to worry about it. But what I'm not going to do is have all this energy of hate and bitterness and anger and frustration trying to tear somebody down because they said this or try to tear somebody down because they said, I'm worrying about what is causing all of this negativity and anger and animosity and toxicity in our community to where we're infighting and destroying one another. I'm trying to heal that. I'm literally invested in healing and I'm fighting that battle. But when I see something like this, I have to point it out. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. As I said in the beginning of this video, if you believe in the work we're doing, if you have uh, a belief in me and how I move and how I operate in the work I do in the community, the work I do uh, with our think tank, with research, with program development, uh, with feeding the people through content. We need your support. The link is in the description box. Click the link and show some love. Also, if you're one of those uh, people who prefer uh, Cash App, the Cash App handle is also in the description box. On that note, look, I'm out of here. You guys take care. Uh, I will catch up with you probably a little later because there's a lot going on. But for now, I'm out of here. Take it easy.